In 1966, a camera Sumi designed was put in orbit over North America, sending back a full view of Earth every 20 minutes. Seeing the pictures gave Sumi an inspiration. It occurred to me that I could take some of these pictures and make a movie out of it. And so I took the negatives and tried to line them up uh, and punch holes in with a needle and so I could then put them on a little jig so they would all be in the same place. And then I pinched my finger and got blood on the negatives and so on. But nevertheless, I was able to get a crude movie. Through the satellite's eye, the daily rhythms of planet Earth were glimpsed for the very first time. It was almost like playing God for the first time. It was wonderful. I still get a kick out of looking at him to this very day, and it's an old, uh, old thing, you know. Since meteorologists began using Sumi's camera, they have forecast the behavior of storms around the world. Countless lives have been saved by the satellite's power to predict. By viewing the whole Earth, satellites give a global perspective to what we see from the ground. Raindrops from a sudden storm can be linked to patterns of yearly rainfall. The interplay of sun and cloud can be tied to the seasonal changes of global temperature. Constantly scanning the planet, satellites let us watch it change. Across the restless Earth, patterns begin to appear. As days race by, clouds circulate from the tropics to the poles. Oceans cover 70% of the planet. From space, we see how global currents, like the Gulf Stream, move the sun's heat around the Earth. Forests regulate the atmosphere, absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. Through the satellite's eye, we see a living planet as vegetation changes with the seasons. But satellites do more than monitor the vital signs of planet Earth. With eyes in space, we now explore our own influence on this vast global system. Today, millions of acres of forest may be endangered by the burning of fossil fuels. Nowhere is this threat greater than a region called the Black Triangle in Eastern Europe, where a river of high sulfur coal fuels the economy. In mills and power plants, coal burns day and night, evoking the dawn of the industrial era when the tool of fire came of age. As coal burns, sulfur dioxide floats skyward, mixing with clouds to become sulfuric acid. Acid clouds drift hundreds of miles and settle over mountain forests. Moisture that once brought life to these trees is slowly bringing their death. 